Hello, everyone. It is that special time that we like to call Last Week in Comicscape, and oh my goodness. Woo! All right, this episode, don't have the kids around. We're going to be talking about some really messed up stuff. And, um, I, you know, look, I kind of saw this coming. If you go back and watch the episode, and feel card to my own video, uh, let your freak flag fly. I was talking about, you know, how they had kind of thrown off the air of normalcy, and Comicsgate was now very much embracing this kind of edge lord image. And once you embrace that, and that becomes your identity, and you're no longer restrained by the need to seem normal, well, the conduct just gets more and more and more outrageous, because whatever was outrageous last week is now kind of passe this week, and we really have to up the ante. So... This week, the ante was definitely upped, which we're going to get into. And, you know, it's unfortunate, because otherwise it was a pretty strong week, I think, for Comicsgate. Uh, Antonio Bryce announced uh, a digital fulfillment on brand, and that uh, he anticipated being able to physically fulfill the book relatively soon. Now, uh, there was some grumbling on, on my side that the resolution on the PDF that Antonio sent out wasn't up to spec. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I cannot see like digital pixelation artifacts. Like when I've done fulfillments of my campaigns, I've sent out low res stuff before and people complain. And at this point, I just judge it by file size. Like, is the file big enough? Okay, then it must be. <laughs> so, but you know, here is, here is a, a comparison of say the Mary Sue versus brand. Uh, I will allow you to judge for yourself whether Antonio's, uh, offering was was pixelated in the pdf but uh but that happened and you know a couple of campaigns were launched uh we had uh sweetcast launching uh a sequel to downcast and we had cecil launching cash grab now and and this kind of goes i think to comic skates long running goals when it comes to when you're about to launch a crowdfunding campaign. I think these guys could really teach a course and, you know, yeah, and it would certainly be a very controversial, but informative course about how to launch a crowdfunding campaigns for success. Cause see, if you read conventional books, they're probably going to go, go out and share your artwork and talk to influencers for comics gate. It's like when, before you're about to launch a campaign, go out and get in a fight on Twitter. It is, it is just, a gold mine or YouTube as the, as the case may be. So, uh, in the run up to Sweetcast launching his campaign, he put out a video where he singles out a very minor, uh, comic book figure, Stephanie cook, uh, who was, you know, essentially saying, Hey, we in comics shouldn't really be trying to compete. We should all just try and get along. And, you know, if, if you really sit back and look what Stephanie cook said, it was, kind of naive and Pollyannic and somewhat anti-capitalistic, you know, she's like, this idea that we need to compete is just an artifact of capitalism, and, and you know, it's, she's certainly a little woke, and so, uh, you know, I guess she made a relatively easy target, we have, we have a new run from this on the horizon, here comes Stephanie Cook with her desire that all comic book people should just get along, and well, well that just can't stand, so, uh, you know, Sweet Cast took a bit of aim at that, and Richard C. Meyer kind of amplified that on his channel. So, you know, getting getting the signal boost, getting getting the, the mob frothing at the SJW Blood in the Water before launching Downcast. So, uh, tip of the hat there to Mr. Stoker. And uh, you know, before we get into Cecil, because we're going to be talking about Cecil here quite a bit, uh, let me do uh, some other news. Uh, Crypto Creates, who, again, is there is a case pending or criminal cyberstalking against the Warcane member Pan, and Crypto is the primary victim that the state intends to put on the stand in that cyberstalking case. And Crypto forwarded on Twitter that Pan had, you know, posted pictures of, oh, hey, went to my local comic book store and checked out this super cool comic book, but that the store Pan went to was actually a crypto store, which is two hours away from Pan. So Pan, according to Crypto, drove two hours out of his way to go to Crypto's local comic book store and then took a picture and posted it to Twitter and this, ha-ha, see this? 
going to your store, punk, and going to your store, Pan does some stupid things with a criminal trial pending. I gotta say that is absolutely brain dead. I mean, look, maybe you got a really sophisticated lawyer who's just gonna totally beat that case, but that does not look good to a jury. I'm gonna tell you right now. I mean, particularly after looking over the hundredth dildo meme that you know Pan has forwarded or put out, or by the members of War Campaign. Oh yeah, and then Pan. It's that. If I was your attorney, I think I would quit. <laughs> Sorry, that's horrible. But. Uh, but that happened, and then we have Cecil. So before Cecil launched his campaign called Cash Grab, which was a retool of a campaign from last year, maybe the year before, called Cash Grab, uh, which, uh, you know, that was before I started reporting. I'm not going to get into the the intricacies of why the first Cash Grab fell apart, but essentially there was a clash of personalities over drama. I, I know it's hard to imagine from from the comics gay crowd, but this time we had you know a retool campaign with people who were very loyal, it's ever so important, to uh, Ethan Van Skyver, and so now we're going to launch Cash Grab the redo, and and running up to that, Cecil was kind of picking a fight with John Delarose, who was himself being very provocative on Twitter, so there was some customer that JDA would, or no, but it, a person, we'll just call him a person, JDA will call him a concern troll, but essentially saying that, uh, John, you know, this person on Twitter was attacking John for not being professional and whatnot, and made the statement that John had lost a customer. And now previously, uh, coming back to Sweetcast, John Delarose says that in a comment on one of Sweetcast's videos that someone left an address, which was the actual physical address of one of John Delarose's relatives, and John Delarose asked Sweetcast to take that off, and Sweetcast declined. And then John Delarose escalated by saying, Hey you, uh, if you don't take that off and something bad happens to somebody in my family because of you, there's going to be all kinds of repercussions, and I'm going to put your your name and address out there and, and the whole bit. And then Mr. Stoker relented and, and took the comment down, but War Campaign did a lot of, oh my god, JDA's a, a doxer allegation. And so now JDA, being very much a troll himself out there trolling for attention, plays into that and makes a comment to this other Twitter user who said, you lost a customer. He's like, no, no, I have your personal info and I cross-referenced it with my customer list and you're not a customer of mine. Touche. So into this, Wade Cecil, who then says that, you know, John Delarose is doing all kinds of un unprofessional conduct and that he is basically hurting the industry for other creators. Meanwhile, uh, I don't know how I, because I, I wasn't involved in this Twitter feud at all, but people brought me up and uh, the comment was that uh, White Lily was just a rehash of Captain Marvel, which I thought strange, uh, and specifically made this comment that comic skaters really want books they can read with their family and not, you know, political propaganda or, you know, clumsy attempts to get a Netflix deal. So um, I thought this comment was apropos for the material we're about to discuss in regards to books you can read with your family, because Cecil launched Cash Grab, and this does not appear to be a book you could read with your family, much like Super Harem doesn't appear to be, or, or Monster MD, or you know, a number of other Comicscape books, really. But uh, and before we get to... The, the, the Cecil launch, Nick Ricada, uh, from what I understand, was a bit inebriated on a Twitch stream and was expressing sentiments that he was upset that Vic Manana basically didn't come on his channel or Twitch stream or whatever and badmouth the defendants in the defamation case that is currently, that essentially Mr. Managna has lost. Uh, except for a possible appeal, or, you know, a possible win on appeal, in which case the trial will will go back to, to trial court. 
So let's go ahead and listen. What I did is I took, uh, you know, because it was like a multi-hour Twitch stream and even the content where Nick is going off about what Vic should be doing is, you know, kind of all over the place. So I, I took, you know, three minutes of all over the place and I put it down to as, as coherent a narrative as I could, which involves taking some things out of order to kind of make it seem pretty good. Um, I, I, I've done my best. I, th those who have witnessed the Twitch stream uh, in its entirety, have, you know, basically characterized it as Nick Ricada is saying, hey, gosh darn it, Vic Monogna, you need to come out here and support those of you such as myself, such as Yellow Flash, such as Tug, who are fighting for you, and you need to call the defendants some very mean names. That's what you need to do. You've already lost your reputation. Why don't you do this? So uh, the, the clips I'm going to play, while edited, I feel very much characterize accurately what, what Nick was attempting to say. So let's give that a listen real quick. How many friends of yours say, ah, I'd love to be friends with you, but you know, the image. Fuck off. But absolutely we're friends. Every time I see him, we're, we hang out, smoke cigars, we have a good time, play golf with him in Hawaii. Fuck everybody else. Guys, I have pictures of me and Vic playing golf and I can't fucking post them. You know what that's like? Vic hasn't made them jealous. Let's be real, I have. Now, now, now this part I think is interesting where uh, Nick is saying, hey, it's not Vic and his lawsuit, which I encourage, which caused the defendants to become jealous of, I don't know what the defense was supposed to be jealous of in this case, but I'm just going with, with the words Mr. Cato put out there. I'm the one who caused them to be jealous. It was me all along. <laughs> all right, let's pick it back up. Hero hey has, Tug has, Yellow Flash has. Vic hasn't done it. You want some fucking truth? I don't know about Hero, Hey, Flash, and Tug. I don't know. I know what I want. I want Vic to fucking support us. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret because you are my Twitch thought friends and I love you. Secret time. I was trying to get Vic on the show today. All I want on Earth is for Vic to come on my show and tell these fucking harlots to die in a fucking friendly fire. <laughs> That's all I want. All I want. What does it take? You know what he listens to over me? He listens to fucking cunts who hate him. <laughs> Vic coming out and fucking saying anything about these motherfucking cunts. Why won't he say anything? So, uh, that was, that was the, that's the first clip. I'm about to play the second. But what I got to say, from a legal point of view, I think this is really strange advice, right? Because let's say Mr. Benogna wins the appeal, okay? That doesn't mean he wins the case. That means they've overruled the judge throwing the case out of court. Now it has to go back to trial, at which point... If Mr. Benogna came on Nick Ricada's stream and said, yeah, you know, Monica Real and Jamie Marchie, just a bunch of fucking cunts. Like, it's not going to play well in his uh, story that he is just this innocent person who is being viciously maligned for sexual misconduct, right? I mean, take a leap of faith with me here. I don't think that's going to sound good in front of a jury. Uh, now, let's, let's listen to the, the, the second clip here. Vic is not too pure for this world. He's not. <laughs> I love that. By the way, those people who thought Vic was a pure guy, he's not. I know him. We play golf. It is really not pure. He's really fucking not. He's a normal guy. He's a good guy, but he's a normal guy. He's pissed about this stuff like everybody else is. He just won't come out and fucking say it. 
I don't want him to say thank you. I want him to say Monica Real is a fat pile of shit. I want him to say Jamie Markey couldn't leave the house if there wasn't a ham sandwich involved. That's what I want! I want him to say Monica Real's teeth could chew through a fucking chain link fence. That's what I want. Why won't he say it? Why won't he fucking say it? I want him to say these people are fucking liars. Why won't he say it? Too nice? They've been beating him to death for a fucking year. Time to stop being nice. Uh, so, uh, Nick put those uh, statements out. Uh, in, in a move of statesmanship, Tug released this tweet where he says that... Uh, Vic is indeed a, a, a good person, and that Tug is out there fighting the battle on Nick's on, on Vic's behalf so that Vic won't have to. Although, this does call into question uh, what exactly Vic is doing in the litigation if he's not fighting for himself. But still, I'm sure... Oh, allow me to address Tug and, and Nick direct. I'm sure... Mr. Benagna very much appreciates all the support you two have given him, as well as all the money raised, which will probably ultimately go to pay off the defendant's legal fees. But still, that's a lot of money, and that's a lot of thoughts, and that's a lot of time spent on YouTube videos. So on behalf of Mr. Benagna, I wish to extend to Tug and Yellow Flash and Hero High, I don't know who the hell that is, and Nick Ricada. Genuine gratitude for all the efforts made in that regard. So. Next. All right. Let's now get into looking at the ins and outs of cash grab. So. Cecil's uh, offers as part of cash grab this ash can which uh is 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 a bit distasteful it is specifically targeting doug tenapel and it describes uh, him uh, and you know it says you know based on a very true story that he is a parasitic tapeworm on a wild adventure to return to a dog's ass um definitely spicy and you know here we are like attacking a, a fellow creator and really, first of all, what did Doug Tenable do to Cecil? And secondly, uh, uh, how is Cecil able to throw stones? This is, you know, Cecil is not an artist. He's not even really much of a writer. Uh, this is literally a cash grab for people who are just fans of Cecil. And I guess don't like Doug Tenable. So I guess Cecil is providing some fan service here. To people that just deep down just really hate Doug. Um, I mean, it's hard for you to interpret this as anything else. But, uh, yeah, you know, um, this caused a, a bit of murmuring. And quite frankly, may have really doomed Cecil. Because first we had uh, we had your boy Zach kind of distancing himself a little bit. Your boy Zach said said this in, in, uh, in one of his videos. So hold on, let me, let me play this for you. And again, I've edited this, but you know, it's 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 you you can tell it. It's it's your boy Zach. No, 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 no. Uh, an industry of fake friends is what's unsustainable. It's what's led yeah, I to. I gotta agree. An industry of fake friends is unsustainable. And really, I mean, what else could we call Comic Skate? So, I'm with you on that one, Zach. Good job. The plunging sales, the having to sell a less for more attitude, the 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 weird beta of you know, decision-making is because, like... Yes, yeah, I, I agree that, you know, this industry of fake friends who are just pretending that they like each other, uh, you know, is leading to, one, you know, this kind of beta decision-making cycle where, oh, well, I know that what's happening is wrong, but I'm not going to call it out. I mean, isn't that the definition of being fucked, essentially? And that it is leading to, you know, uh, falling sales and that now that sales are falling, they have to try and milk fewer backers for more money. So I'm, I'm totally with you boys, Zach, on this one. Think about it. They're doing their job not very yeah. well. And they're making comics not very right. well. But 
well, scathing here. They're doing their job not very well, making comics not very well. I gotta say, that is a scathing attack on Comicsgate, but it is entirely accurate. Then they have this whole other side job of constantly, like, monitoring each other and just, like, everyone in the industry for wrong He's things. He's right. They do waste a lot of time just monitoring each other and everyone in the industry for wrong think. I mean, I'm surprised that Richard C. Meyer is coming out like this, but whew, he's finally letting the truth fly here. Doing their little night letters. I, I, I don't have a time to write a night letter to anyone. Okay, so here's how you get comics to be amazing. Right. You hire based on merit, hard work, intense competition. That is a recipe for there success, along with some luck. There you go. So, uh, just as I've said previously, you know, capitalism and embracing capitalism and competition and just giving up this idea that you're a community, that you all have to support each other, is the way out of this mess. If you want to make an outstanding comic, you have to hire based on merit and not loyalty. I absolutely applaud Richard C. Meyer. Way to go! Yes! <laughs> So, and, you know, I guess perhaps taking a lead from uh, from your boy Zach, Ethan had some pretty strong words for his, his friend Cecil here. Let, let's listen to, uh, to Ethan's takedown. All right, here we go. And then you've got people who should be on our side who sit there and decide that they're going to fire into the, you know what I mean? We're going to fire into the dugout. We're going to fire into our own trenches. And, and by the way, I think that was, that was a great comment, fire into the dugout, because it's called, you know, Dirt Worm Dug is firing into the dugout. So I got to give Ethan some points for creativity there. Take out our own soldiers, our own limited army, because they're not being good enough. They're not good enough. They're not doing a good enough job fighting back against the massive corporations that have been taken over by SJWs. Oh, they owe the customer so much more. Let's kick these guys in the shins when they fuck up even slightly. Uh, these people are scabs and parasites, obviously. I don't need to say it. You already know it. When you see these guys who are Comicsgate or Comicsgate aligned or have the same goals as us actually actively making content specifically to pick on uh, our own guys, and even if you disagree, even if you don't like these guys, uh, even if you are, uh, you know, if you're, ah, I don't like that guy. He's aligned with this guy. I don't like that. To actively try to destroy that guy's business is pretty fucked up. It's just, I, I don't know how to say it. It's just like, wow. you, you want to kick puppies? Is that what you want to do? Okay. I mean, Ethan was taking no prisoners on that one. He just absolutely came out and just, you know, just told Cecil how the cow ate the cabbage. Like, how dare you? attack someone who is, you know, CG Jason, or, you know, whose values are CG aligned and is one of our limited soldiers fighting back against the SJW taking over corporations of Marvel and DC. Like, why would you make content specifically attacking one of our guys? Even if he's affiliated with people you don't like, you shouldn't do that. So Ethan attacking his longtime friend Cecil and this pretty much doomed cash grab, you know, right from the get Okay. All right. All right. All right. That never happened. That never happened. No, no, no. Ethan did say those things, but he didn't say them about Cecil. He said them about Comic Book Cut and me. The person that Ethan was defending was Jeff Hicks saying, oh, well, you know, you're kicking him in the shins for screwing up even slightly. You should just love Jeff Hicks because despite the fact he may be associating with people you don't like, he's, he's on your side. When it came to this very direct and uh, rather distasteful attack on Doug Tenapel. Uh, oh, and by the way, those comments by Boy Zach also, that wasn't about Comicsgate. That was a follow up to what Clint said about Stephanie Cook. So that was Richard C. Meyer attacking, you know, Marvel and DC SJW culture. Uh, when it comes to the community that is Comicsgate, uh, I guess Richard C. Meyer is fine with the lack of competition there within that industry. So uh, let's hear what Ethan actually did have to say when it came to launching uh, Cecil's cash grab live on his stream. All right, take it away, Ethan. Right now, uh, we've got a, we've got. Uh, okay, this is going to be. This is. I shouldn't do that. And there's there's John Malin with with the cholo hat. Let's hear it. We've got a. We've got. Uh, okay. Okay. This is going to be, this is, I shouldn't do this. There it is. 
do I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to do it. Do I'm going to do it. Uh, Dirtworm Doug decided to launch his own spike campaign against Comicsgate on Kickstarter. Mm. Fuck this. Uh, by the way, I had to ask, what does he mean by launching a spike campaign? And apparently, like, in the rankings for money made or whatever, like, when John Malin launched the Where to Cover, well, that allowed Graveyard Shift to move up in the ring of whatever. And therefore, according to Ethan, well, then Doug Tenaple had to launch his campaign to sell off overstock inventory so that he could move up. And so he's calling out a spike campaign. Mm-hmm. $17,614 in the first 36 hours. That's pretty embarrassing. How That's dare pretty you embarrassing, Doug. Such a little Sorry amount. about Cecil's that. going to beat it in the first 30 minutes. Cecil is going to run his little motor scooter right over your fucking head in just a few seconds here. Cecil's cash grab graphic novel, $15,100, $16,500. It is only a minute. It's only, it's only going to be a few seconds before Cecil utterly destroys Dirtworm Doug with a book about Dirtworm Doug, right? $1,000 a minute. Over $1,000 a minute. Absolutely historic, guys. Get in there and back. Doug Tenaple decided he was going to try to do what John Malin did with his spite campaign. He fucking failed. Let's see those spite emojis in the chat right now. The, ban- the brand new spite money emojis. This is spite money, Dirtworm. You shouldn't have fucked over Comicsgate. <laughs> this is where it is. Comicsgate, ladies and gentlemen. I, 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 I get... How did Doug fuck over Comicsgate? I still want to know. What, like, what he he offered products and people bought it, and if they didn't, if they later ended up not wanting it, they got a refund. How was Comicsgate fucked over? Please, unless by Comicsgate we mean Ethan, and by Doug wasn't loyal to Ethan, right? Oh well, that's how he fucked over Comicsgate. I mean. Ethan. Shouldn't have fucked over Comicsgate. This is where it is. Comicsgate, ladies and gentlemen. Join this movement. Uh, This is where it all happens. Uh, Let's go over here and look again. $17,614, okay, in 36 hours. Uh, All right, let's uh, double check this right here and see where we're at. Oh, Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We're edging up on that. Back big, get the $75 tier. Uh, Go get daddy's belt. One. I'm doing. I'll do. I'm doing double. So people. Oh, can we get him on full screen real quick? Ethan? All right. So, uh, Ethan fully embracing the dirtworm Doug attack on fellow creator Doug Tenaple, and encouraging everyone to back the comic book, not based on its merit, but based on who it was attacking, and specifically saying. Get this money in to spite Doug. You know how you spite Doug? You give Cecil a bunch of money. That'll show Doug. I think I have to agree with my friend Vicky, who's like, Comicsgate has, like, how can anyone say that Comicsgate is not a hate movement? In the run ups to both these campaigns, the creators were out there picking fights and picking targets in order to get an audience riled up on the day of the launch or picking a personal target over a grudge and saying, you know what, fuck that guy, give Cecil money. And jump in and tell me where I'm wrong, but how is that not a hate marketing or a hate movement? This ain't about quality comic books anymore. I'm sorry, we that, 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 that ship sailed a long time ago. Anna, that Star Wars girl, uh, has expressed some support for her friend Cecil, and she has set up a GoFundMe because there is a cover where uh, the the basically this is a reference to Human Centipede, where uh, the mouth of one person is stitched to the anus of the next person in a long sequence, and at I think the three thousand dollar tier, you get to be the person who's there in front, and Anna wants someone else's mouth to be stitched to her anus as she is <clears throat> in front of the Cecil Lapid, or I don't even know how you pronounce that. And so she has set up a GoFundMe and encouraged her backers to uh, give her money so that she can be there on the cover uh, in support of her friend Cecil. So uh, way to go, that Star Wars girl. Uh, I appreciate you looking to support your friend. Let's, let's give her a hand for that one. But as you can imagine, the, not all the reactions to this campaign have been overly rosy. Now, Doug Tenaple, who is the target here, uh, his response was very muted. He just commented that uh, hating him was profitable, which 
I, I think we can all agree that that was. Uh, but Mike S. Miller, uh, it was, was just kind of disgusted with what was going, as was Edwin Boyette, who not only launched a tweet, but I believe is uh, on his own channel pointing out that this kind of targeted harassment of an individual violates Indiegogo's terms of service and encouraging Indiegogo to pull that campaign down. And I got to say, this is the natural consequence of letting the freak flag fly. When outrageous behavior becomes the norm, and now you have to top the outrageous behavior, eventually you're going to cross a line and you're going to get deplatformed. I mean, YouTube and Indiegogo, Twitter, these are not known to be campaigns which, or, you know, platforms rather, which will just allow anything goes from anyone regardless of whether it happens to be hate speech or not, right? I mean, th these guys are absolutely courting disaster here, but... So far, it's paying off pretty handsomely. Uh, Cecil, I think, made over $40,000 so far in his campaign. So, uh, hooray for Comicscape. Um, I want to point out uh, that Ethan's behavior here is really not all that shocking if you've been following him. He put out a tweet in support of War Campaign and saying that their memes usually fell walk the line of good taste, but, you know, we're, we're, we're usually uh, kind of within the, the good taste realm after somebody from War Campaign did this tweet of Bean that I talked about a while ago. Uh, I went ahead, at the time I was in L.A., and I didn't have a chance to record, but now I have had a chance to record it. And this tweet, by the way, is still up, uh, despite, you know, Twitter's terms of service after like six weeks. So whoever says Twitter is is being overly harsh in terms of banning people, hey, I want you to explain this tweet to me, all right? So here we go. This is someone who's taken Bean from Pennsylvania, a former customer of Ethan's, and animated her face and, and put a voiceover dialogue describing her clitoris. Not for the faint of heart. Let's give this a listen. Mark! Yes, that tweet is still up. Uh, there it is on Twitter. If if you want to go comment, whatever, th there it is. It's, it hasn't been taken down. So, uh, and you know, and in the wake of, of that tweet, Ethan's still Halen War campaign. So I, I don't think uh, anything that Ethan has done recently should come as a surprise to anyone. This is very much part of his MO. And let's face it, Comics Gate is a hate movement. It's based on just taking people and saying, these people suck, and because these people suck, give me money. That's all it is at this point. And maybe products get delivered at some point in the future, but they're going to be substandard in comparison to what you could get from me or Doug or anybody else. And in fact, the people offering the more, let's face it, better products are the ones who are being targeted for the hate unless you're super loyal to Ethan. And then you're going to be attacking other people on his behalf. That's just, that's how it all works. Whew. Well, let's, let's take a breather and decompress there. I do want to remind everyone that my campaign for Wetland Issue 4 Virgin Cover is still up on Indiegogo. You're encouraged to go check that out. Uh, we did hit our $500 goal, but it's nowhere near any of the hate bucks. So, I mean, look, the marketing plan does work. I, I'm not going to I'm not going to take that away from them. But just because you can get a lot of hate bucks doesn't mean you need to. So uh, I'm just I'm going to keep marketing based on quality and I'm going to see what that does for me. This has been Press and Pulse with Pocket Jacks Comics. Thank you so much for your time. Take care.